Hello dear friends, in this topic is unique and very direct because there is not room for half measures. Opinion piece. A letter to humankind. Do you want us to show ourselves? Decide whether we should show up or not. Consider this as a referendum. Do you want direct divine intervention? Most of us are humanoid in form. Do you want star visitors to appear? Peace is not the absence of war, but fraternity. Humanity's entry into the family of galactic civilizations is expected. Let's start. This long letter to humankind appeared without an apparent sender. It is posted here and there. This is another piece from the internet whose validity I cannot assess. All I can say is that it sounds like a good idea, is current and is skillfully written at the level of intelligence and maturity that I would associate with a serious, non-technical but practical level of discourse. The writer has a very good, good grasp of language and human psychology. Although there are a few moments where the grammar is different from what we are used to. Most importantly, he makes no reference to impossible constructions or false technology or any kind of religious or new age bathwords. This is a clean and straightforward letter as you will find. Accordingly, I am sending it for your investigation. The main assertion of the letter is that human civilization is now in an uncontrollable implosion, in free fall, that could not be fixed from within the existing social systems. The implosion would cause a major breakdown in, whole, in all human orders. There would be a dark path toward the use of technology to enslave the human population in a degraded environment. Those who are defining this path, many of them unwittingly, would have the greatest power advantage over resources and could gain advantage during the next breakdown. There are many who would take a liberating path, who could win the game if they understand the decision and who could lose their fear, sense of isolation and ignorance about the state of, of affairs. The main proposition in the cut is that the mass appearance of visitors is in the heavens could help humankind clear the veils of illusion and delusion, help resolve many existential problems and dilemmas and provide an attraction to help pull the positive mindset out of the negative social vortex and allow refocusing on the next evolutionary stage. The main question of the chart, of the letter, I mean, is whether you want star visitors to appear. It is suggested that direct contact and some cultural assistance would provide the means to overcome the major obstacles in human social and cultural evolution. The visitors argue that we should be prepared for such contact on a mental and emotional level. Consent and expectation for such contact should be freely created throughout the world, and fewer humans would react in mass in fear, manipulated by reactive power. They suggest that a focused telepathic response from each reader would be sufficient to help it reach a conclusion about what should or should not be done. Even as the Internet is achieving universal penetration during this time, the visitors request that this letter, their first mass communication, be translated and transmitted universally throughout the world. They also suggest that this should be done person to person and that 
we forget about the official media. Letter to humankind, who transmitted this translated message to you is irrelevant and should remain anonymous in your mind. What matters is what you do with this message. Everyone wishes to exercise their free will and experience happenings, happiness. These are attributes we were shown and now have access to. Your free will depends on the knowledge you have of your own power. Your happiness, happiness depends on the love you give and receive. Like all conscious races at this stage of progress, you may feel isolated on your planet. This impression makes you secure in your destiny. However, you are on the verge of greater pebbles, of which only a minority is aware. It is not our responsibility to alter your future without your decision. Consider this message as a worldwide referendum and your response as a ballot. Who are we? Neither your scientists nor your religious representatives talk unanimously about the inexplicable celestial events that humankind has witnessed for thousands of years. To know the truth, one must face it without the filter of one's own beliefs, however respectable they may be. A growing number of anonymous researchers are exploring new avenues of knowledge and are getting very close to reality. Today, your civilization is flooded with an ocean of information, of which only a small part, the least disturbing, is disseminated. What in your history seemed ridiculous or improbable has often become possible, then realized particularly in the last 50 years. Be aware that the future will be even more surprising. You will discover the West and the best. Like billions of people in this galaxy, we are conscious creatures that some call extraterrestrials, although the reality is more subtle. There is no fundamental difference between you and us, except for the experience of setting stages of evolution. As in any as in any other organized structure, hierarchy exists in our internal relationships. Ours is based on the wisdom of various races. It is with the approval of this hierarchy that we address you. Like most of you, we are on, the, on a quest for the Supreme Being. Therefore, we are not lesser gods or goddess, goddessless. Goddesses, I mean. But virtually, you are equals in the cosmic brotherhood. Physically, we are somewhat different from you, but most of us are humanoid in form. Our existence is a reality, but most of you do not yet perceive it. We are not mere observations. We are consciousness just like you. You fail to grasp us because most of the time we remain invisible to your senses and measuring instruments. We, we wish to fill this void at this moment in your history. We made this collective decision, but it is not enough. We need yours. Through this message, you become the decision makers. You personally. We have no human representative on us who can guide your decision. Why are we not visible? As at certain stages of evolution, cosmic human humanities discover new forms of science beyond the apparent control of matter. Structured dematerialization and materialization are part of it. This is what has been achieved by your humankind in a few laboratories, in close collaboration with other external creatures, 
at the cost of dangerous crown promises, which remain hidden from you by some of your representatives. Apart from the aerial of space objects or phenomena known to your scientific community, which you call UFOs, there are multidimensional spacecraft that apply these capabilities. Many humans have been in this world, auditory, tactile or psychic contact with such craft, some of which are under occult powers that govern them. The scarcity of their observations is due to the outstanding advantages brought by the dematerialized state of this craft. Now, listening them for yourself, you cannot believe in their existence. We understand this completely. Most of these observations are made individually to touch the soul and not to modify any organized system. This is deliberate from the races around you, but for very different reasons and results. For the negative multidimensional beings who play a role in exercising power in the shadow of the human oligarchy, discretion is motivated by their willingness to keep their existence unknown. For us, discretion is motivated by respect for the free will that human beings can exercise to manage their own affairs so that they can reach technical and spiritual maturity on their own. Humankind's entry into the family of galactic civilization is greatly anticipated. We can appear in broad daylight and help you to achieve this union. We have not done so until now because so few of you have truly desired it out of ignorance, indifference or fear, and because the emergency of the situation did not warrant it. Many of those who study our appearances count the lights of night without illuminating the way. They often think in terms of objects when it comes to conscious beings. Who are you? You are children of many traditions that over time have enriched each other with the contributions of others. The same applies to careers on the surface of the earth. Your goal is to unite in respect for these roots to achieve a common project. The appearance of your cultures seems to keep you apart because you substitute it for your deeper selves. From Form is now more important than the essence of your subtle nature. For the powers that be, this dominance of form constitutes the walls against any form of danger. They are asked to overcome form while still respecting it for its richness and beauty. Understanding the consciousness of form makes us love human beings in their diversity. Peace doesn't mean not to make war. It consists in becoming what you are in reality, one and the same fraternity. To understand this, the number of solutions within re your reach is decreasing. One of them consists of contact with another race that will reflect the image of what you really are. What is your situation? Except on rare occasions, our interventions have always had very little impact on your ability to make collective and individual decisions about your own future. This is motivated by our knowledge of your deep psychological mechanisms. We came to the conclusion that freedom is built every day, as a being becomes aware of himself and his environment progressively riding himself of limitations and inertia whatever they may be. In spite of numerous courageous and willing human consciousness, these inertias are artificially maintained for the benefit of a growing centralizing power. Until recently, humankind lived in satisfactory control of its decisions, 
but it is increasingly losing control of its own destiny due to the growing, growing use of advanced technologies, whose lethal consequences on terrestrial and human ecosystems are becoming irreversible. You are slowly but surely losing your extraordinary ability to make life desirable. Your resilience will be artificially diminished, regardless of your own will. There are technologies of this kind that affect both your body and your mind. These plans are on their way. This could change as long as you maintain this creative power, even if it habits with the dark intentions of your would-be overlords. This is why we remain invisible. This individual power would be doomed to disappear without a collective reaction of great magnitude. The coming period is one of rapture, whatever it may be. Threats are opportunities. But should you wait for the last moment to find solutions, should you but anticipate or suffer pain. Your history has never ceased to be marked by encounters between people who had to discover each other under conflicting conditions. Conquests almost always occurred to the detriment of others. The earth has now become a village where everyone knows everyone else, but conflicts and threats of all kinds still persist and worsen in duration and intensity. Although a human being as an individual has many potential capacities, he or she cannot exercise them with dignity. This is the case for the vast majority of you for essentially your political reasons. There are several billion of you. However, the education of your children and their living conditions, as well as the conditions of numerous animals and much of plant life are under the control of a small number of your political, financial, military and religious representatives. Your thoughts and beliefs are based on partisan interests to turn you into slaves and at the same time give you the feeling that you are in total control of your destiny, which in essence is reality. But there is a long way between a wish and a fact, when you don't know the real rules of the game. This time you are not the victor. Information bias is an age-old strategy for human beings. An even older strategy would be to induce thoughts, emotions or organisms that do not belong to you through an ad hoc through ad hoc technologies. Wonderful opportunities for progress approach great threats of destruction and subjugation. These dangers and opportunities exist now, however you can only perceive what is shown to you. The end of natural resources is programmed, while no long-term collective project has been launched. The mechanisms the mechanisms of ecosystem depletion have exceeded irreversible limits. The scarcity of resources and their unjust distribution, whose price will increase day after day, will provoke fratricidal struggles on a large scale, but also in the very heart of your cities and countryside. Love and hate. Hatred grows, but so does, so does love. I repeat the phrase, hatred grows, but so does love. That is what keeps you confident in your ability to find solutions. But the critical, the critical mass is insufficient, and the work of sabotage is being skillfully carried out. Excuse me. Human behaviors formed from past uh, habits and training have such inertia that this perspective leads you to a dead end. You entrust this problem to political representatives whose awareness of common welfare slowly fades in the face of cooperatist interest. 
corporatist interests with such difficulties. They are always debating about form, but rarely about content. Right at the moment of action, the delays will build up to the point where you would have to submit rather than choose. This is why, more than ever in history, your decisions today will directly and significantly impact your survival tomorrow. What events could radically modify this inertia typical of any civilization? Where will a collective and unifying consciousness come from to stop this blind advance? Human tribes, populations and nations have always met and interacted with each other. In the face of threat to, be hum to the human family, perhaps it is time for more interaction. A great wave of rollers is about to emerge. It mixes very positive aspects, but also very negative ones. Who are the third parties? There are two ways to establish cosmic contact with another civilization. Through its permanent representatives or directly with individuals without distinctions. The first, the first way involves struggles of interests. The second way brings awareness. The first way was chosen by a group of races motivated to keep humankind in slavery, thus controlling Earth resources, gene pool and human emotional energy. The second way was chosen by a group of races allied with the cause of the spirit of service. For our part, we have adhered to this selfless cause, and we have presented ourselves a few years ago to representatives representatives of human power who refused our outstretched hand on the pretext of interest incompatible with their strategic vision. That is why today individuals must make this decision for themselves without any representative interfering. What we proposed in the past to those who we believed were in the position to contribute to your happiness we propose now to yourself. Most of you are unaware that no human creatures participated in the exercise of those centralizing powers without your senses either suspecting or being able to access them. This is so true that they have taken control very subtly. They do not necessarily rely on your material plan, and that is precisely that could make them extremely effective in the near future. However, be aware that a great number of your representatives are fighting this danger. Bear in mind that not all abductions were car are carried out against you. It is difficult to recognize the truth. How could you, under such conditions, exercise your free will when you are so manipulated, what are you really free from? Peace and reunification of your peoples would be a first step towards harmony with civilizations other than your own. That is precisely what those who manipulate you behind the scenes want to avoid at all costs, because they reign through the vision. They also reign over those who rule you. Their strength comes from their, from their ability to distill distrust and fear in you. This does considerable damage to your own cosmic nature. This message would be of no interest if the guardianship of these manipulators did not reach its peak and if their deceitful plans did not bring it to fruition, to fruition in a few years from now. Their deadlines are near and humankind would suffer unprecedented torments during the next 10 cycles. To defend against this faceless aggression, it would be necessary to have sufficient information leading to the solution. As it was also the case with humans, there is resistance among these dominant races. Appearance 
will not be enough to distinguish the dominator from the ally. In your present state of psyche, it is extremely difficult for you to distinguish between them. In addition to your intuition, training will be necessary when the time comes. We invite you to a conscious alternative to the priceless value of free will. Priceless value of free will. What can we offer? We can offer you a more holistic view of the universe and of life, constructive interactions, exper experience of just and fraternal relationships, liberating know-how eradication of suffering, controlled exercise of individual powers, access to new forms of energy, and finally, a better understanding of consciousness. We cannot help you to overcome your individual and collective fears or bring you loss you would not have chosen or work for yourselves with individual and collective effort to build the world you desire through the spirit of seeking new, he new heavens. What would we receive should you decide that such contact should take place, we would rejoice in the safeguarding of the fraternal balance in this region of the universe, the fruitful diplomatic exchanges and the intense joy of knowing that you are united to achieve what you are capable of. The feeling of joy is strongly sought in the universe because its energy is divine. What, what is the question we ask you? Do you wish us to show ourselves? In quotes. You, how you, how can, excuse me. How can you answer this question? The truth of the soul can be read by telepathy. You need only ask yourself this question with clarity and give your answer with the same clarity. On your own or in a group, as you wish. Being in the heart of a city or in the middle of a desert does not affect the effectiveness of your answer, yes or no. Immediately after asking the question, ask it as if you were talk to yourself, to talk to yourself, but thinking of the message. This is a universal question. And these few words, put in context, have powerful meaning. Don't let hesitation get in the way. That is why you must think it through calmly, with full awareness, to perfectly associate your answer with the question. It is recommended that, your answer, that you answer immediately after another reading of this message. Do not rush your answer. Breathe and let all the power of your free will penetrate you. Be proud of who you are. You may have been wakened by problems. Forget about them for a few minutes to be yourself. Feel the strength welling up in you. You are in control of yourself. A single thought, a single response can drastically change your near future, one way or another. Your individual decision to ask your inner self to appear in your material plan and in the full light of day is precious and essential to us. Although you can choose the form that suits your best, rituals are essentially useless. A sincere request made with your heart and your own will will always be perceived by those to whom it is sent. In your own private ballot box or your secret will, you will determine the future. What is leverage? This decision should be made by as many of you as possible, even though you may seem to be in the minority. It is recommended that you spread this message in as many ways as possible in as many languages as possible, to those around you, 
whether they seem receptive or not to this new vision of the future. Do so using a humorous or mocking tone if that can help you. You can even mock him openly and publicly if it makes you feel more comfortable. But don't be indifferent because at least you will have exercised your free will. Forget the false prophets and beliefs that have, that have been passed down about us. This request is one of the most intimate that can be asked of you. Making a decision for yourself as an individual is both your right and your responsibility. Passivity only leads to the absence of freedom. Likewise, indecision is never effective. If you really want to hold on your beliefs, which we understand, then say no. If you don't know what to choose, don't say no. If you don't know what to choose, then don't say no. It's the same phrase. If you don't know what to choose, don't say yes out of mere curiosity. This is not a show. This is real daily life. We are alive and living. Your history has many episodes where determined human beings were able to influence the th threat of events despite their small number. Just a small number is enough to take temporary power on earth and influence the future of the majority. A small number of you can radically change your destiny in response to impotence in the face of so much iner inertia and obstacles. You can facilitate the path of humankind into brotherhood. One of your thinkers once said, give me a handshake and I will leave the earth. Spreading this message will then be the hand to strengthen you and we will be the lever of light years. You could be the artisan to lift the earth as a consequence of your appearance. What would be the consequences of a positive decision? For us, the immediate consequence of a favorable de collective decision would be the materialization of many ships in your sky and on earth. For you, the direct threat would be the rapid abandonment of many certainties and beliefs. A single conclusive visual contact would have enormous repercussions for your future. Much of your knowledge would be forever altered. The organization of your societies would be profoundly disrupted forever in all fields of activity. Power would become individual because you would see for yourself that we are living. Concretely, you would change the scale of your values. The most important thing for us is that humankind would form a single family in the face of this unknown that we would represent. The danger would slowly vanish from your homes because it would indirectly force the undesirables from whom we call third parties to appear and disappear. They would all carry the same label and share the same roots, humankind. Later, peaceful and respectful exchanges would be possible if that is their wish. For now, the who, he who is hungry cannot smile. He who is afraid cannot welcome us. It saddens us to see men, women and children suffer to such a degree in their flesh and in their hearts when they carry such an inner light. This light can be your future. Our relationships can be progressive. Several stages of several years or decades would occur. The demonstrative appearance of our ships, physical appearance alongside humans, collaboration in your technical and spiritual evolution, and exploration of parts of the galaxy. <coughs> Each time you would be offered new options, you would then decide for yourself to go through new stages if you think it necessary for your external and internal well-being. 
no interference would be decided unilaterally. We would live as soon as you are collectively wish, uh, wish us to do so. Depending on the speed to spread the message worldwide, several weeks or even several months would be necessary before our big appearance, if that is the decision made by the majority of those who will have used their ability to choose, and if this message, message receives the necessary support. The main difference between your daily prayers to entities of a strictly spiritual nature and your current decision is extremely simple. We are technically equipped to materialize. Why this historical dilemma? We know that foreigners are considered enemies whenever they embody their known. In the first stage, the excitement that our appearance would generate would strengthen your relations worldwide. How can they know if our arrival is a consequence of their collective choice, for the simple reason that otherwise we, we, we would have been there for a long time already at your level of existence. If we have not yet reached that point, it is because you have not made that choice explicitly. Some of you might think that we would have you believe in a deliberate choice of yours to legitimize our arrival, although this would not be true. What interest would we have in openly offering that you th that which you do not yet have access to for the benefit of, of most of you how can you be sure that this would be another subtle money over by a third party to better enslave you because you always fight something you identify more effectively than the opposite isn't terrorism a glaring example Whatever it is, you are the sole judge in your own heart and soul. Whatever your choice, it will be respectable and respected. In the absence of human representatives who could potentially mislead, you ignore everything about us and also about those who manipulate you without your consent. In your situation, the precautionary principle of not trying to discover us no longer prevails. You are already in the Pandora's box that the third party has created around you. Whatever your decision, you will have to get out of it. Faced with such a dilemma, one ignorance against another. It is necessary to ask your intuition. Do you want to see us with your own eyes or just believe what your thinkers say? That is the real question. After thousands of years, one day this choice was going to be inevitable. Choose between two unknowns. Why spread this message among you? Translate and disseminate this message widely. This action will affect you, your future in, a, in an irreversible and historic way on the scale of millennia. Otherwise, you will postpone any opportunity to choose to several years later at least one generation, if you can survive. Not choosing means submitting to the choice of others, not informing others for running the risk of obtaining an outcome contrary to the expectations. Remaining indifferent means giving up free will. It is about your future. It is about your evolution. This invitation may not receive your collective assent and may be ignored for lack of information. However, no individual desire goes unnoticed in the universe. Imagine our arrival tomorrow, thousands of ships, a cultural clash unique in the history of mankind today. Then it will be too late to regret not having made the decision and spread the message, because this discovery would be irreversible. We insist that you do not rush, but think about it and decide. The mainstream media will not necessarily be interest, interested in spreading this message. Therefore, your stuck task is to transmit it as an anonymous but extraordinary thinking a loving being. 
you are st still the architects of your own destiny. Do you wish us to show? And that's all for today. Thanks a lot, dear friends.